So I stopped trading ICT and immediately made $45,000 in one month, all using this really simple scalping strategy. And the best part is that it only takes 45 minutes a day. Now, don't get me wrong, ICT concepts are profitable and can be extremely effective when used correctly. But if you're spending too much time analyzing charts, getting overwhelmed, and struggling to fit ICT into your daily lifestyle, then in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why stopping ICT concepts and simplifying my approach led me to my most profitable month ever. Plus, I'm going to give you the full in-depth breakdown of the strategy I used to get results like these. So why did I stop trading ICT after tens of thousands of dollars that I've made in the last year and a half? Well, it was because of these three problems. Number one, revenge trading. One of the biggest problems that many traders face is revenge trading. I mean, we all have that one friend that's still bitter about their ex and makes all these impulsive decisions trying to get back at her. And that's the exact same mindset that ICT traders slip into after taking a loss. When I first started with ICT and I had a bad trade, my first instinct was to hop right back in and make back the losses that I just incurred. But it often leads to decisions that are made based on emotions and not based on the strategy that you're trying to trade. When you're constantly chasing losses, your judgment is significantly clouded. You might feel desperate and then start to take trades that don't meet your trading criteria. And this results in a cycle of you taking even bigger losses, which can be dangerous. Now to break free from this, I changed to this new strategy that only takes 45 minutes per day. And this time constraint element allows me to step away from the charts after 45 minutes and reset for the following day so that my emotions don't come into play on the following trade, allowing me to come back fresh free from the urge to revenge trade. The second reason that I stopped trading ICT is that it simply didn't fit my lifestyle anymore. I didn't want to spend hours glued to my screen, constantly monitoring the charts and waiting for a trade to pop up. With this new strategy, I focus on the charts intensely for 45 minutes, but after that, I'm done for the day and I head off to do whatever else I need to get done. And let me tell you, this has been an incredible game changer for me. I can spend time with my family, pursue other hobbies, and focus on my own personal development. And this newfound freedom has significantly improved my quality of life and made me a happier person overall. Plus, it's made me a better trader because when you're not constantly consumed by the market, you can be so much more clear-headed and make better trading decisions. Now, the third thing is complexity. And this is one of the most common reasons why ICT traders end up quitting, simply because of the complexity of it. The sheer number of different strategies and concepts within the ICT world can be complex completely overwhelming. With constant updates and changes, it's easy to get lost in a sea of different information and start to develop a real case of shiny object syndrome, jumping from one strategy to another. But in contrast with this new strategy, I focus more on simplicity. And instead of trying to look at the market in a different way and try to beat the banks, I'm now going back to my roots and making things as simplistic as possible. Support and resistance, breakouts. These are fundamental market principles. The simple approach gives me a really solid framework for trading, but also allows for flexibility to adapt to market conditions. So now you understand why I changed from ICT. Now I'm gonna show you the exact strategy that I traded that got me to the $45,000 per month mark in trading, giving me my best month ever. Starts at New York Open, which is roughly 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is not trade this first five minute candle that opens up as New York opens. So we're gonna be trading on the five minute time frame, and you're going to want to not trade this first five minute candle. The second thing you're going to want to do is put the simple moving average onto your chart, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to go to indicators and search for simple moving averages or SMA and add it to your chart. You can use any one you want. You're then gonna set the length to 50 and then click okay. And that is pretty much all I look at with my strategy. You're now set up to trade. Now, the first thing you need to do is go on to the four hour and have a look at the most recent four hour support and resistance zones where you may find 
a bit of you know resistance or support so the first one of course is up here and this is a very rough process it doesn't need to be exact uh, but it's a framework for you to trade within so if you also mark out this area down here you can see there's been multiple reactions at this zone price has bounced around there so effectively what we're able to do is trade within this zone okay sorry that was a bit crazy we're trading within this zone all right and so currently we're in the middle of this zone and so what that means is we can take longs or take shorts uh, whereas if we were towards the end of this zone here we would only be able to take buys because we don't want to take sells into this brick wall of price similarly if we're up here we don't want to take a buy into this brick wall until we break through it okay so that's essentially how the four hour time frame works we then drop down to the five minute where we are looking for our five minute range so now we're going to be looking at the zones that we're looking for price to break out from and so clearly we've got this range here and we've got this zone here so this is our range okay really simple really easy right and what a lot of people will say is why don't i mark out this here that's a clear support and resistance zone well we don't want to be taking a range that is actually within the whole range okay we want to be taking the extremities of this range so that we are not caught up in uh in liquidity basically we, if we if we take a breakout here look at all this traffic we have to get through so that we can get a, a clean move. We want to be taking the clear breakout from the range, which would be here and would be here, okay? And it's quite clear for you to see that on the charts. We don't want to essentially be having a range that looks like this, okay? And then we're taking the breakout of a range that's within a range. So say there's a range here like this and like this, well, we're not going to want to be taking a breakout here because we're going to run into issues when we get to here. We want to get into clean air when price breaks out from here or breaks out from this zone here. OK, that's what we want. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, it is quite clear. So then what we're looking for is for price to break and close below this or break and close above this. And the other rule that we have is this 50 moving average. Now, what we want this 50 moving average to be doing is facing downwards, okay? That's one of the confluences we look at. But what's essential is that price is below this 50 uh, simple moving average for sells and above the 50 simple moving average for buys. Now, that's all I'm looking for now is for price to break below here, be below the 50 moving average okay um, and for this 50 moving average to be facing downwards which you can see already we have been we have been trending downwards with this 50 uh, simple moving average so let's see which of these zones it breaks now as you'll see here it broke with a wick we want price to break and close above it broke and closed below back into the range. We want a break and closure. Okay. Now price plays around a little bit. See it broke, wicked out, wicked out again. Wicked out again. So all of these are fake outs. Okay. We want price to break and close. Didn't break and close. It broke and closed back in to the zone. We want price to break and close below that zone. Once again, price broke and closed above the zone. So we're waiting for one of these five minute counters to break and close below the zone. And there you go. Price broke and closed below the zone. And so now what we're going to do is place our entry at this support and resistance zone over here. But what we're going to want to do in real time, which I can't display in this actual um, demonstration is we're waiting for price to get back to here and start to reject this area once price starts to reject and hesitate at this area we can hop in over here and that's exactly what I did when I executed this particular trade live on stream on Friday 
Okay, I took I take all of these streams, uh, all of these trades live on stream. And if you want to trade with me and see me trade every single one of these trades live, the link in the Discord, uh, the, the description below is available for you to join that Discord where I go live at New York session every single day. So essentially, we wait for price to come back up to the zone, start to reject. And then we hop in over here. I use between a 20 and 25 pip stop loss used about 22 pips there and then we're looking for one to two risk reward we then go break even once we get to one to one risk reward which will be roughly there okay so price literally came in tapped it started rejecting we hopped in and literally in one candle we're done with that trade okay and then price went on even further and and sunk way further but we got our nice one to two risk reward done within literally one candle. Uh, and that happens pretty often with this particular system. So that's exactly how I trade. And again, I took this trade live in front of hundreds of people in the Discord, which you can join with the link below in the description. So thank you everybody for watching. That's exactly how I do it pretty much every single day. Uh, I'll see you guys in the Discord lives. Cheers, everyone.